2023 edition of the Dominic Greco Concert Band. I'm Bill Graham, and I want to thank you for coming this evening. I hope you enjoy our indoor concert. The First National Bank of Denison has sponsored tonight's concert with a generous donation. This season, the Dominic Greco Band will be directed by three main directors and some guest conductors. We are beginning tonight's, today's concert under the direction of Cheryl Graham, music teacher and former band director of New Philadelphia City Schools. And I'm lucky to say she's been my partner in crime for 51 years. Composer Randall D. Stanbridge has written many commissions taking many forms. As he explains, in May 2021, I was approached by a middle school teacher about a new commission. He told me about Nicole, a recent graduate from the high school and his former student who was battling a very aggressive form of brain cancer. She was then 20 years old and had been moved into hospice care. He asked that I create a work in her honor to celebrate her life. Nicole and her family had created a motto to navigate this difficult time. Their motto was, choose joy. This significantly moved me as I feel too many people waste their time and their lives choosing hate, anger, and misery. The piece uses elements of Beethoven's Ode to Joy, along with a five-note five note motif, representing the five family members of Nicole's immediate family. A trio is heard near the beginning, representing Nicole and her siblings. The work alternates between a rhythmic and joyful intensity and more nostalgic and bittersweet lyrical movement in the middle. There are moments of happiness, humor, worry, pain, and determination. I hope this work is a fitting tribute to all who choose joy in times of darkness. As I went with my wife uh, as she was judging large groups this year. We heard this number, Choose Joy, and I said that would make a perfect Mother's Day present for her because that exemplifies how we've tried to live our lives. Here's the Dominic Greco band performing Choose Joy.
beyond the particular circumstances of a moment and extend grace to one another. Similarly, choosing joy requires looking beyond our immediate circumstances to connect with a bigger picture. Joy requires a connection. And tonight, we hope to connect with you through the music that brings us joy. Anne McGinney, is, a known, is known worldwide as the most prolific woman composer in concert band literature, having written over 225 pieces with over 50 commissioned works by bands across the United States. Opening with the pre-Revolutionary War version of Yankee Doodle, used by Fife and Drum Corps, this tightly knit, very playable medley includes Bound for the Promised Land, Shenandoah, When Johnny Comes Marching Home, and several folk song excerpts over a dramatic closing version of Battle Hymn of the Republic. We continue our program with an American celebration.
next number is written by composer James Swearingen, who is a, an Ohio native, and we'll be playing another song of his in a little while that goes more into his history. But this is how the publisher describes the next song that, that, that the band will be playing. Let the Spirit Soar by James Swearingen consists of broad flowing melodies combined with lush harmonies that produce beautiful sonorities not usually found in band pieces at this level. Uh, Mr. Swearingen wrote for inexperienced bands all the way up to the top level ones and all of his music was just excellent. So composer James Swearingen provides superior work for developing more expressive playing, tone control, and phrasing concepts while providing a piece that uplifts the audience. So just like the name says, let the spirit soar, this is an uplifting number. James Swearingen, let the spirit soar.
celebration is complete without the tradition of a salute the United States Armed Forces it, uh, to recognize the fighting men and women who serve our country and keep us safe. The most popular arrangement is by Bob Lapp, a prolific composer, arranger, and renowned clarinetist. Lapp's tribute is an upbeat medley of tunes that include the U.S. Army's The Quezon Song, the U.S. Coast Guard's Semper Paratus, the U.S. Marine Corps' The Marine's Hymn, the U.S. Air Force's The U.S. Air Force, and the U.S. Navy's Anchors Away. Loudon's arrangement flows smoothly from one song to the next while spreading the melody. Listen throughout for counter melodies and complex harmonies, traditional links between the military songs. Veterans, please stand and be recognized as your military song is played and sung by Ron Marquette and Micah Carrick as we salute our veterans with Armed Forces Salute.
During this time, he was employed in several different theaters in and around his adopted home, Vienna, where he served as music director and conductor for the next 17 years. He was a prolific writer, composing over 1,134 theater-related works. Morning, Noon, and Night in Vienna belongs to a musical genre that preceded the operetta, the humorous play with song. The overture to such a production is separate from the storyline. Its function was to get the audience's attention, quiet the house, and set the scene for the entertainment. The original stage comedy died the natural death of a mediocre entertainment whose form is no longer in vogue. But its charming overture lives on. Henry Fillmore arranged Morning, Noon, and Night in Vienna for concert band in 1922. And it's since become one of the very popular and enduring traditional overtures in concert band repertoire. If you can think back to your days of cartoons, in the cartoon Baton Bunny, Bugs Bunny does an impressive job of conducting morning, noon, and night in Vienna. Unfortunately, Bugs Bunny started to focus on obnoxious flies during the performance, which made the musicians in the orchestra, orchestra very uncomfortable. We hope Cheryl stays bug free as she conducts morning, noon, and night in Vienna.
during a concert, many times they'd see that I had my eyes closed. And what I was doing was picturing in my, in my mind what I'm hearing out on the stage. Could, so could you see those flies flying around and Bud's Bunny swatting at them? Boy, if you couldn't, there's something wrong, I'll tell you. Okay, after spending 12 years as the 17th director of the President's Own, from 1880 to 1892, John Philip Sousa formed his own civilian band at the urging of concert promoter <coughs> David Blakely. So Sousa enjoyed tremendous success with his Sousa band, traveling extensively throughout the continental United States and abroad. One summer retreat was New York's famous Manhattan Beach a resort at which the Sousa Band spent several seasons providing featured entertainment. In 1893, Sousa dedicated a march to the establishment and its proprietor, Austin Corbin. This march was quickly adopted by bands worldwide, but it was rarely played in the unusual manner that the March King himself often performed it. In Sousa's interpretation, the last half of the march is a short descriptive piece. The trio's bubbling arpeggios imitate the waves of the ocean lapping against the shore during a walk along the beach. The waves get louder and louder but then fade away as the walk continues down the coast. Making his Dominic Greco debut and, and conducting is Stephen Chambers choir director and assistant band director here at Claymont City Schools. Stephen, let's have Manhattan Beach March.
British composer Ralph Vaughan Williams is one of the most eminent 20th century composers. He's been credited with, an, with establishing, establishing a new nationalist style based on English folk traditions. He began collecting traditional English folk songs from the counties of Somerset and Norfolk in 1902 and ultimately collected more than 800. He created an entirely individual style by adapting their modal harmonies and striking rhythms. This suite, written in the early 1920s, blends his ideas with well-known folk songs. He also composed nine symphonies, four operas, and was active with amateur music groups, conducting and composing for choirs, brass bands, and film. So with the 100th anniversary of the piece, here's Stephen Chambers conducting Movement 1 and Movement 3 of Folk Song Suite. me up as a 
song originally composed by the Irish Norwegian duo uh, Secret Guard. The music of the second third Secret Garden. The music was written by Secret Garden's Rolf Loveland and the lyrics by Brendan Graham. 
After the song was performed early in 2002 by the Secret Garden, the song only became a minor UK hit. The song, however, has been recorded by more than a hundred other artists, including Josh Groban, who popularized the song in 2003, and his rendition became a hit in the United States. We bring in our vocalist, Ron Marquette, to sing local arranger and composer Corey Swinderman's arrangement of You Raise Me Up. It was much like it is today, 
It included some of the finest and most dedicated musicians from our area who played outdoor concerts to the delight of their audiences. The first director was the esteemed Mr. Dominic Greco, a music teacher who emigrated from Italy to our area and realized the need for a full concert band of diverse musicians. Their talent and reputation grew until one day, as legend has it, in the early 1930s, at the state fair where they performed, members of the Sousa band came to hear them play. Here's the part that you may not know about Mr. Dominic Greco. At the same time that the Dover Concert Band, formerly the Italian band, was gaining popularity, Mr. Dominic Greco became the band director for Eurexville High School. He was the band director here at Eurexville High from 1933 to 1951. Mr. Harper Froman succeeded Greco in both roles with the Eurexville High and the Dover Concert Band. Mr. Froman was the band director at Eurexville High School from 1956 to 1972. It was during this time that Froman also directed the Dover Concert Band. In 1973, the name of the Dover Concert Band was changed to the Dominic Greco Band. Today we've come full circle. 72 years after Mr. Dominic Greco directed this community band, one of our current directors is the band director here at Claymont, April Leiner, who's up front. To, I, I'd want to do like a contest and call you April Lenar. <laughs> okay, April Leiner, who's up front to conduct the rest of our concert, is the current band director and the first female head band director for the Claymont Schools. Along with April, we have a few other members of our band that are on the staff for Claymont District or our former staff for the district. Stephen Chambers, choir, choir director. <laughs> Carrie Kunkel, high school art teacher. David Maxwell, percussion instructor. Karen Moffat, drama instructor. And Linda Egan, formerly, former assistant band director. We're delighted to have the connections of the Dover Con Greco Band, excuse me, connection of the Dominic Greco Band to the Claymont District. Carl Tyke wrote Old Comrades March when in 22 he was bandmaster to the 123rd Grenadier Regiment in Ulm, Germany. Tyke left Ulm and began a new career as a composing policeman at Potsdam near Berlin. His marches enjoyed immense popularity everywhere, and he won worldwide fame with old comrades. It's said that Tyke even created a new kind of march in which the vigor of Prussian military marches is blended successfully with the tunefulness of Viennese music. Here's the Dominic Greco band performing Old Comrades March.
have a style and grace that are truly exceptional. It's no wonder his music has been so enthusiastically received by musicians worldwide. He's earned degrees from Bowling Green State University and The Ohio State University. In recognition of his distinguished contributions, Mr. Schweringen was recently granted the title of Pre Professor Emeritus from Capital University in Columbus, Ohio. Before his appointment at Capital, he spent 18 years teaching instrumental music in the public schools of Central Ohio. A pride and celebration is one of James Swearingen's most vibrant pieces with highly appealing and beautifully interwoven themes. Here is a pride and celebration.
1 Corinthians 13, verse 6 states, Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. Halcyon Hearts is an ode to love and how it affects us all. Halcyon denotes a time when a person is ideally happy or at peace. So in short, Halcyon Hearts is about the moment of peace when one finds their love or passion. The peace centers around major sevens and warm colors to represent the warmth that love brings us all. The introduction, which is sudden and colorful, symbolizes the feeling of the unexpected journey it takes to find love. Using the colors and natural energy of the ensemble, we create this sound of ambition and passion throughout the work. No matter race, gender, religion, nationality, or love, we all are united with the common thread of passion from the heart. This piece was dedicated to those who love no matter the negativity. Do not allow hate and prejudice to guide your lives. Always choose love, and the house in days will come. Composed by Kataj Copley, here is Halcyon Heart Hearts.
journeys between the marches, two steps, cakewalks, and ragtime pieces resulted in an intermingling of these forms. Carl King probably wrote The Walking Frog during 1917 to 1918 while he was director of the Barnum and Bailey Circus Band. But it was not published until 1919 after he had left the circus. He originally wrote this piece as a circus clown walkabout, but its infectious charm soon made it a favorite with many other circus acts. We hope this piece brings you joy tonight, but not so much that you start swinging from the ceiling like trapeze artists. The Walking Frog. because of all the glisses. We have a wonderful patriotic medley that we'd like to do for you this evening. Once again, Micah Carey and Ron Marquette are our vocalists. We hope you enjoy this Corey Slitherman arrangement of America the Beautiful and God Bless America.
Thank <laughs> you.